In today's video, we're taking a look at how to install the Victron Energy Smart Battery Shunt easy and simple. This so easy, anyone could do everything that we use on the video. We're gonna leave a link on the description. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. That does help us out a lot, thank you. So you woke up today and better find your battery status is in your mind. Don't worry, here at the Stata Box team, we've got your back. A few blocks away, but a back is a back. And today we're taking a look at the Victron Energy Smart Battery Shunt 500 volts. We also have a video on how to install the Renegy Battery Shunt. We'll leave links on the description as well as many other solar power videos, we'll leave links on the description. And the Victron Smart Battery Shunt is a precision battery monitor that measures current, voltage, and the state of charge by tracking all power going in and out of the battery bank. It sends this data wirelessly via Bluetooth to the Victron Connect app for real-time monitoring and history. And this particular line can come in 300 amps, 500 amps, 1000 amps or 2000 amps and can be used in a system from 6.5 volts all the way up to 70 volts. And these are the things that we get in the box. We get two cables. One is a battery connection cable with an M10 ring terminal for connecting to the battery positive and providing energy to the shunt as well as an inline fuse. And at the other end of the cable, as you can see, it ends in ferro. And that is a great thing that it already comes pre-installed. If you wanna check out our video on how to install ferros, we'll leave links on the description. We get a second cable, which is an auxiliary connection cable also with an M10 ring terminal as well as an inline fuse and this cable can be used to monitor the starter battery voltage a midpoint voltage in between batteries or for temperature sensing and if you notice to the right side we have the two entry ports for the aux and battery positive and to install the only thing that you have to do is take your ferro ended part of the cable and insert it on the port you always want to make sure that you hold it on the white part of the cable and also make sure that you have completely inserted it in, showing the world that you're a master at nighttime activities. If you wanna go ahead and remove the cable using a small tool, like a small tiny flathead screwdriver, you can push on the orange part of the port and at the same time, pull out the cable. And next, also in the box, we have the start of the show. And that is the smart shunt unit. And if we take a look at to the left of the unit, we'll notice a VE direct port, which is used to connect other Victron devices or accessories. In this particular case, we're going to use the port to connect to the Servo GX. And to be able to do that, you're going to need a VE direct cable, which does not come included in the box. This you would have to buy separately. Links in the description. And to install the cable, you're going to notice two tabs at the bottom, which align with two notches on the port, which we want to align when installing as as we insert it. And now that we took our class on nighttime education, we're ready to look at the other parts of the shunt. And as you can see at the top, we have two terminals, which accept three eights or M10 or 10 millimeter lugs on each side. If we notice on the right side, we have the terminal that says two battery minus, and this is basically the terminal that connects directly to the battery negative and measures all the current going in or out of the battery. And on the left side, we have the terminal that says to system minus, which is the terminal that connects all the wires coming from all the loads or chargers. So every amp flowing between the system and the battery passes through the shunt for accurate monitoring. And now that we filled your brain with battery shunt technology, we're we're ready for the installation. And because the last thing you want on a clear sunny day is to die, we wanna go ahead and turn off our system. And remember, when turning off your system, the last device you wanna turn off is your charge controller. And when turning back your system, the first device you wanna power up is your charge controller. And that is a pro tip, because the last thing you want is to go from a good day to a bad day. And the next thing that we like to do is charge up our batteries. And you can choose to do this via solar or using a battery charger. In this particular case, we have a 24 volt battery bank that consists of two 12 volt lithium phosphate batteries. So that means we're gonna charge them up separately until they reach 100%. And when connecting them back together, we wanna make sure that the voltage is the same or have a minimum difference of 0.1 volts before connecting in series again. A pro tip, if you have a variant higher than this one, then you might 
need to let them rest or what we like to do is place them in parallel so they can even out and usually we get them into specs within a couple of hours or a few days and now that we survived another day we want to verify where we're going to install the shunt remember you want to have it the closest to the battery as practical as well as taking into account that the terminal labeled to battery minus or any additional cables like the VE direct cable or the auxiliary cable as well and now we're going to do our first connection and this is the cable that's going to go to the terminal on our shunt that says to battery minus and the cable that we connect on this terminal is the one that goes to the negative of our battery or battery bank and we have two ways of doing this we could either cut the cable in half or to the needed length that we need it or the second option you can connect the cable directly and make a new cable in this particular case we're going to connect it directly and make a new cable if you want to check out our video on how to cut strip and crimp wires to lugs we'll leave links on the description and we're doing this because we're coming off a bus bar if you want to check out our video on how to install a bus bar we'll leave a link on the description but let's say in your case you don't have a bus bar and you either chose to cut the cable or add an additional one then in that case you want to take the newly created cable and connect it to the battery minus terminal and now that we have our wire connected to our battery now we're ready to connect the other terminal which is the to system minus and here depending on how you went about this you're either going to connect your new wire from that terminal to your bus bar if you don't have a bus bar then you basically are going to connect every negative wire that you removed from the battery which means all the loads and or chargers in this particular case we created a new wire so we're going to connect that one to the negative bus bar as you can see we have now connected both terminals to the shunt now we're ready to give power to the smart shunt and saying it's alive so we're going to take our battery connection cable and taking our ferro ending side we're going to install it on the port that says V battery plus which is on the right side and we like to connect this cable to the positive side of our battery or battery bank you can also connect it to your positive bus bar but we like having it like this in case we turn off the system we still know the state of charge of our battery even though the smart shunt remembers the last state and also updates to the current status once turned back on we prefer it this way and also according to Victron's official installation instruction it advises it should be connected to the positive terminal of the battery not just the positive bus bar so the shunt sees the actual battery voltage for accurate monitoring and now your shunt should be alive and now we've come to the optional steps in the installation first we're going to install our auxiliary cable and we do this because we have a battery bank so we want to monitor the midway point between both batteries so we want to go ahead and connect the furrow ending part of the cable to the left side of the port on the shunt or where it says aux and then we want to install the terminal ring part to the positive terminal of our second battery but also remember that in your case you might not have a battery bank and you want to install this to monitor the health of your engine starting battery on an RV or boat also remember you can use this auxiliary port to install the Victron's temperature sensor which is sold separately to monitor your battery's temperature if you want to check out our video on how to install a Victron temperature sensor we'll leave links on the description now that we install our auxiliary cable we're ready to install our VE direct cable in this particular case we're going to connect to our servo GX and what this does is is by connecting the smart shunt to a servo GX it lets you see the battery's charge usage and health on the screen or track it remotely throughout the Victron's app in this particular case we don't have a screen but we track it remotely throughout the app and as you can see it's alive and now your name has changed to Victor and before we turn on our system we want to go ahead in the app and enter the correct parameters for our particular system and we do that before because like that 
we still have our battery or battery back at 100% charge. If we turn it on, we might lose that 100% charge. And now we're ready to go in the app. You can either scan the QR code on your particular device or download the Victron smart app. And having your Bluetooth on, you want to pair to the device. It's going to ask you for a pin number. It usually is six zeros in a row. Then the first thing it's going to ask you is to update the device. You want to go ahead and do that. In some cases, you might have to do this more than once. Once we updated it, we go back in the smart shunt. And then at the top right, you're going to see a gear icon. Next, we're going to get battery capacity. In this particular case, we have a 280 amp hour battery bank. So we place that information in. Next is asking for our aux input. In this particular case, we're going to put mid point. And remember, you're always going to place this information according to your system. You can always verify with your barbecue paper. I mean, with your owner's manual or contact your manufacturer directly next that's going to enter us to the settings page we're going to go ahead and click on battery and as you can see the first option is battery capacity if you have not entered your battery's capacity you want to go ahead and enter that now so the next parameter we want to change is charge voltage and the setting we want to change this to is about 0.2 volts to 0.3 volts below your charger's actual flow or absorption voltage so in our case our charge controller is set to 28.4 so that means we're going to set this to 28.2 so for example if you have a 12 volt battery and you have your absorption rate at 14.4 then we want to minus 0.2 volts or 0.3 volts and then that would be 14.2 volts or 14.1 volts and this is according to Victron but remember in your particular case it may be different you can always verify with your barbecue paper I mean with your owner's manual for correct parameters next we're going to change the discharge floor which is currently set to 50% for lead acid as you can see most of the numbers here are set for lead acid if you have a lead acid battery then you want to leave it at 50%. In our case, we have a lithium phosphate battery. And according to Victron, we can set this from 10 to 20%. In our case, we're going to place it at 5%. Our tail current for lead acid batteries should be 2 to 4%. For lithium phosphate, it should be about 2%. So in that case, we're going to place it at 2%. Next, we're going to change the puker exponent parameter. According to the manufacturer for lead acid, it should be 1.1 to 1.2. And for lithium batteries, it should be 1.05 to 1.1. In our case, we're going to set it to 1.05. Next, we have the charge efficiency factor, which for a lead acid battery is 85 to 90 percent in our lithium phosphate batteries from 95 to 100. In this particular case, we're going to set it to 99%. And lastly, we're going to place the state of charge of the battery. In this particular case, we charged it to 100%. So we're going to hit synchronize where it says synchronize SOC to 100%. If in your particular case, the state of charge of your batteries are different, then you can enter that in manually. And you would do that where it says state of charge. And now that everything's connected, we can go ahead ahead and turn on back our system and remember a pro tip when turning back on your system you always want to make sure that you turn on first your solar charger and then every other device as well when turning off your system you want to make sure that the last thing you turn off is your solar charger and now you've done it you can pat yourself on the back for a job well done you can see your battery's voltage the state of charge the current going in or out the power to consume app hours and also also, the time remaining and if you connected the auxiliary cable you can see that at the bottom in our case you can see the midpoint voltage deviation percentage and now you've done it you can pat yourself on the back for a job well done now you have become a black belt on battery monitoring of your block. Don't forget, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Either someone on the Statabox team or someone on the YouTube community can help you out with an answer. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on social media. Thank you for watching. And here's a link to our latest video.